Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Are you looking forward to Christmas? It's coming! Christmas is coming so quickly. Can't believe we're in the last few days. So today it's a non-Christmassy project because I kind of figured if you haven't made it yet, you're probably not going to make it at all. But just a pretty bag. And it is a paper bag and you can see it bows open very slightly and that's quite deliberate. And the paper I've chosen is deliberate as well. And this is the beautiful typeset paper which is uh, black on very vanilla and it's lovely and you get 24 sheets in a pack um, for £11.50, yeah, £11.50, 24 sheets and it is a thin paper, I'll bring in the full sheet in a second, there's lots of different patterns but I wanted it to be paper particularly because paper bags they do a certain thing, they don't hold their shape which is exactly what I wanted it to do so I'm just going to hold this like this. Do you know what, if I hold it at the bottom you'll see it's bowing open ever so slightly. My original prototype I made with regular DSP, it held itself shut like that, um, which I actually didn't want it to do because I wanted it to be a bag that wasn't going to, well I didn't want it to hold itself shut, I wanted you to be able to put little, you know, maybe gift cards or little thank you cards or, a, you know, just little things inside, but that it wouldn't distort, but would naturally hold like that. So first thing I'm actually going to do is the stamping. And while I use this one, which is, um, I'm turning away looking at my shelves, it is called Mixed Bunch. I actually don't like the finished effect with that one, so we're just going to do these ones this time round. Those were Knight of Navy. I've got my very vanilla card stock. I first thing I need to do is get um, three of the Pansy Punch. <laughs> Throw it around. I need three of those. So... Just in the very vanilla cardstock. I need three of those, and I need three of my beautiful boho blossoms. It's actually only those two that I'm going to use, but you know, that's okay. We'll have the other ones as well. So, three of those. Oh, there we go. Just retrieve those off the floor. And then I'm going to do a little bit of stamping just to get these ones in the middle, and I'm using teat petals. Love it. Gorgeous set. And I am going to stick with the same sort of ornate pattern that I chose for the first, my original one. But I'm going to stick with it. It looked pretty. Wisteria Wonder. That's the ink I've got. And actually, it was, I was talking to my friend Nikki the other day and I went, oh, i got no mojo. Pick a colour for me and I'll work with it. And she just went, Wisteria Wonder. So I'll go with it. And actually, Wisteria Wonder is the very first. It was the first colour that really caught my eye and resonated with me. Just punching these out with a petite petals punch. Um, and it was before I joined Stampin' Up, I used to watch, and I still do watch, Angie Judah's videos. She's Chicken Scratch, for those who perhaps don't know. And um, she did an, it was an Easter project and it used Wisteria Wonder and the colour just spooked to me. It did. Okay, my sponge. Somebody has asked me recently how I make my sponge. So I have got here, half one and I cut my, they come in rounds, they cut it into four, well, they come in rounds, I cut them into four, take those and I take a large oval punch, which I forgot to get out, piece of cardstock, also forgot to get that so I will grab this one, write on it whatever the name is, fold it in half, fold it round and then staple it, and I, bet I haven't got my stapler either, actually probably, no I haven't, oh is that, here we go, and just staple it on. So that's how I make my little handle doodahs to sponge with. So, okay. So, Wisteria Wonder sponge and ink. Quickly go around all of these. Um, what was I saying before? Oh, yes, about watching Angie's videos. Yes, she did a. It was, I'm sure it was an Easter project. I'm sure there was colouring in it, but it was the Wisteria Wonder colour. I was just like, oh, I love that colour. And it is very beautiful. Keep going around all of these. It's a really quick bag to make. Obviously, the longest part is doing the the edging, which I probably need to re-ink that. Okay, I'm going to sponge up the edges of these ones too. Three more to go, and then I'll lift them up, and then I'll show you how to lift them as well. 
I like having the trails of flowers across bags. I think it just makes them look very pretty. And, you know, for those who've watched me for a long time, you'll know I'm a simple stamper. And <laughs> stamping three times is the simplest way you can do it. So, okay, I'm going to keep that out because I want to... I'm going to try not to try not to forget to sponge the edges of the bag. Remind me if I don't, if you can. Okay, I just thought it was probably wrong size mat. So I'm going to take my big paper piercing mat that Fennel decided she was going to chew. Anybody else got any cats that do that? She'll chew anything if she can get hold of it. Christmas tree, she had that. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Okay, so I'm going to put all of my flowers up on my mat and. I'm going to take the back of my paper pierce because it's got a nice rounded edge. Push hard into the middle of these ones. It might you might get a little hole. It's okay because we're going to cover those. You could, if you wanted to, just you know you could fold up the edges a little bit. I just like to do this, and then the same into these ones. And then. We're going to now use glue dots. So I'm going to turn these ones over because I want the patterned one, the stamped ones, to go into the middle of the biggest flower. And I've got my, I have got some pearls, here they are. Pearls to go in the middle. These are the medium sized ones, they're going to go into the middle of all of those. This is quite a nice rhythmic action doing this. Um, obviously I'll make a lot of cards and I'll make a lot of the same cards. I make fresh ones each month as thank you cards. Um, and I like to do lots of punching and what have you and putting pearls and things on. I find it very rhythmic. I generally don't tend to think about anything else, just what I'm doing. I might have some music going. And it's just a gentle action. Love it. Okay. Oh, I've got the wrong flowers in those ones. Wrong pearls. Oh, I needed the big ones. Silly me. <laughs> That's because I was talking and I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pop those out of the way just for a second because I'm going to put the bag together now. Um, and this is the paper, and I don't know how well it... You can almost see through it. I, I, you probably can't, I don't know that I can get the lighting right that you can see through it, perhaps there. Um, but it's lovely. It literally feels like a piece of... Well, not quite like a piece of newspaper. There's no ink, but it's, it's that sort of thin paper, and it's lovely. And like I say, it... it did the action that I wanted it to. So my piece of paper is 12 inches by eight and a half inches and I've got, I've cut on the length so that this will wrap around like that and the wording won't be upside down. So 12 by eight and a half which is 21 and a half by 30 and a half centimetres and we're going to score it gently because it's paper at three and three eighths of an inch and at nine and one eighth of an inch, which is eight and a half and 23 centimeters. Then turn it round so that you're going to put your score line at what will be the bottom of the paper. So we're going to score this one at one inch, which is two and a half centimeters. Uh, I can't remember what my finished dimensions of the bag are. Let's have a look. Uh, five and three quarters by seven and a half inches. Ooh, I don't know what that is. I'm going to say 19 centimetres by, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I shall make sure I've got it written on my blog. That's why I side folded over, I'm just looking for my score lines because I didn't push hard, I've got to hunt them down. Fold up the bottom one. And there's two little pieces you need to remove. So when it's folded, if I tip it like that, 
the score line there and there and the one at the bottom, we need to get rid of the left hand and the right hand bottom rectangular parts. Get rid of those. I found that when I did my original, granted it was done with DSP rather than with this, um, it, it just wasn't pretty. It sort of buckled and, and that probably helped to make it not fold and stay closed nicely. But what I wanted it to do was to go up like that. And so it will fold over in a particular way. It's going to fold. You'll see where the centre line is. If you fold it one way, you'll have too much paper on one side and not enough the other. So that is going to be the top part. I'm going to run some adhesive down there. This is just snail. Snail is fine. Fold it over. And you can see it's, I don't know, well you can't see it because you're looking above, but it's naturally open slightly. And that's, again, as I said before, that's what I wanted it to do. There we go. And again, popping open. Perfect. Let's get these flowers on before I punch the holes and finish it all off. So... And there's my mini glue dot, so I'm going to start at the bottom corner and work my way up again, as I did before. That's pretty with the wisteria wonder, isn't it? Ooh, I'm pleased. I didn't know what it was going to look like. <laughs> and just randomly place these about. So start with your biggest ones and then fill in your gaps afterwards. There we go, and then to finish, I've got, oh I forgot, look I nearly did it, I've got to sponge the edges. I'm perhaps not seeing that very well on camera. It's showing up quite well here. There we go. So I've now got my, what size is this? One eighth of an inch handheld punch. And I'm going coming from the sides and going in as far as I can. And then the same on the other side. And I'm going to try... I'm going to try and follow this line of script. There we go. And then I can bring in my matching Wisteria Wonder seam binding ribbon. And do you know what? I'm going to grab two lengths, I think. And on my original one, I actually have four little knots inside. I think I'm not going to do that this time. I think I'm going to tie these ends together. And I think I might have less... It might not stick out quite so much, I think. She says in theory. I don't know yet. Oh, yes, that's better when you've untangled your ribbon. So the same over here. fingers today. I 
it's neatening those up. And then that really is the bag made. <laughs> That's very twisted, isn't it? Some twist all of that. There we go. Bag made. And like I say, it will naturally want to open itself, which is perfect for you to add your little bits and pieces in. What do you think? I like it. Hope to speak to you soon. Bye.